Um, hope everybody had a nice break, and, and at least we had really cool discussions, and, and um, we have a spot um, where we can continue talking about them. Um, first of all, um, my name is Alex. I'm Leonard. And, and we are um, um, two guys from, from Tendis. And the question that we are talking about, it's like the billion dollar, but it's a euro question, is, um, so this is the amount of money that um, annually the German government is spending on, on IT consultants, on licenses, and all of that. And um, at some point, some um, guys within the um, federal, but also the state government, decided that this is an amount which is nice, we have it, we still have it, but, but there should be something or, or someone there should be someone who can, who can change uh, the number and spend it into something more sustainable because after annually spending that amount of money, um, nobody still owns the code uh, or the services, which they are because they are always uh, mostly subscription-based. Um, that's where we come in. Um, tennis, tennis is somewhere on the intersection between the public administration and the, the open source ecosystem. Um, why that? Um, because we are 100% state-owned, um, we call ourselves a startup within the government, um, and our function is to be an OSPO for the German public administration. And although we are situated in Germany, um, we work um, largely internationally, and, and Bastian also um, just mentioned our, our friendship with, with Dinum. Um, we have projects um, with, um, I think, almost 10 or 12 uh, other European uh, countries. We have projects which we run with the European Union, with the UN, and many other um, public organizations. Um, what do we do? So, what do we do? Uh, as, then as, as it is in the name, the sovereignty is the sovereignty. One, one of the main goals we're working on is, um, is having, having the possibility to choose between options. When we are not able to choose between options as public as society, um, we, are, we are not really sovereign in a way. So we are addressing those fields where we think that's needed, that's where we have to go on. And currently we have two pillars Then this is based on. The first one is the, is the uh, product pillar, so that's the open desk, our, our solution for, for all, all stuff around office and, and public sector tooling in, in the general workplace. And we have the open code, which is the platform for open source solution within the public sector. Um, open code as platform it aims to provide for the public sector all skills, services, and what is needed in, in terms of strengthening those goals of digital sovereignty. Um, for, for, for the both it's all based on open source, for sure. That's kind of the obvious ways to go in toolings where we say this fulfills all our requirements on digital sovereignty the most, so we should more move in this direction and we as Zenders with Open Code um, go in this angle for public sector working as an OSPO and, and fastening the integration of open source in our general data. Yeah. Uh, open Desk has a very simple mission um, to say that we have a workspace solution which can be deployed anywhere and can be used anywhere as long it's always in the German one, we always have like a small star, as long as you can run Kubernetes in, within your environment. But this is the, the, a very easy one, and, and I think um, the importance of, in regards to OpenDesk is that it's not a tool which we created from scratch, but it's actually a tool which, um, which is run or, or funded by, by the German government, um, us as now the new product owners of it, and also many others, which we, um, we have a, an instance where we do all the project management, which is called OpenDesk Family. Um, so this is basically the family where we work in, and, and we have um, different types of partners. We have um, open source um, companies, we have, um, we have contributors, we have one of the most modern um, data centers in Germany, and, and also a service provider who does all the support. And I think this is really important to see, and, and also this is a, like a small preview on, on how OpenDesk is going to look like from next week on. Um, and also, um, we already had, during the lunch break, we already had a lot of discussions. Um, Leonard is, is the guy who's running the, the platform. Um, with me and, and my team, we do, the, um, we do the products. And if you want to uh, have a chat with us, we have an entire hour uh, today in the afternoon, so join us. The question is, um, why do we need a platform 
uh, and, and why, do, why does our team need a platform to run these open source products? And, and I guess um, everybody in this room always had an idea somewhere. And this is basically the, the tender story. Um, and then there is also the public sector. And within the, and, and um, everybody always tries to get somehow an idea into the public sector. Um, but then everybody knows that there are always different types of barriers. Um, everybody is, is um, either, um, you, you are divided into two teams, either you are um, highly motivated and, and always run against these walls to, to crack them, um, or you sometimes um, uh, decide not to do that and, and, and say that, that the public is, um, I don't know, slow and whatever. Um, and the, the question is, how to get in? Yeah, and <clears throat> why is it that way? Because when, when, when we talk about using open source software, there are coming up many questions from the public sector side, which are kind of uh, well known in a way, but it might be not the same language as we understand them in different other fields. So we're talking about what kind of quality insurance and features do we need in the public sector? What kind of procurement processes do we need to address or do we fit in to, to be able to, to get into with our idea? Um, and comp uh, compliance questions. Security for sure is a big thing all over the place, not only in the public sector. And if you talk with public sector, they always need to be able to call someone and that needs to be really fast. So there should be a good support and that should be cleared. So there is all this entry door and um, so the German government um, decided with one of the, to do one of the first um, initiatives through this uh, digital sovereign uh, strategy was to Next point, um, to build up open code. And open code is the, is the platform infrastructure for open source for the, for the public sector. And we work on open code. We try to addressing those entry door uh, questions for the whole public sector in Germany and make it much faster to go through. So especially with infrastructure, we can address quality, compliance, security uh, on this way. Um, by founding open code, there were like five main driven questions um, to, to, to get such a thing running for, for a government and for a whole sector. The first one was, let's collect together what's all there, because public sector since decades does open source. There's a lot of that. We can collect it together, we bring it in a GitLab, and we can kind of curate it in a way uh, on, on a public sector perspective to say, okay, this is really the needed stuff we need directly and we can Translated, this is what you said in the beginning, our Zenus approach, we translate between those uh, open source ecosystem and the public sector and curate the software catalog. We had to make sure what is our public sector definition of open source in Germany. Also there, we didn't invent it again. Sure, there are the OZ definitions and we address it to that, but we translate it into German and make it more accessible for public sector to, to bring it to the questions of procurement and all this stuff. So the second one was, uh, third one was license clearing. So we had, if you if we have 11,000 communes in Germany and they all need to be experts in open source licensing, we never will reach a, a, a situation in the future where we are able to deal with that. So that's where we say with that infrastructure, we can solve that on one place. We uh, legally um, checked over 500 open source licenses. We made an allow list for the public sector and everyone can now look it up and make it easy to, to at least have a compliance check on the software. This all is uh, public in our web, uh, wiki on open code, so it's even for reusing contribution always open. Um, we said we, we need a collaboration platform to work together and bring our efforts together because on the first point, software catalog, we realized there's a lot of open source, but the culture of reusing it is not really there. So we have like hundreds of solutions for a problem which is really similar to each other. So we need to work together. It's collaboration is one of the big things. How can we get together? And one of the big things I learned with open code in the first year now is the main feature for the public sector in Germany. You can work there together. It's easy. It's just registration. It's not a procurement process. You are allowed to work there. And that's a really big cultural step and shift in the strategy how we're doing it. I know it sounds also simple, but simple things are big things forward. Um, and the last one, community of communities. We real, in the beginning, we said we need one community for the public sector, but it's not possible. We have so many different communities of projects, and it's more like the platform is there to integrate between those communities to make their work visible. Um, just some 
inspirations on a range of use cases we currently have on the platform, on the collaboration, the architecture guidelines of the federal government. They get now, um, there's an initiative uh, do, on, the, on the broader government level work uh, with, with GitLab repositories to, to collect all these comments. In the past, so far, this was all done by emailing and sending and, and getting requests and feedback and stuff like that. So it's much more a transparent and interactive way. We have projects like Government Site Builder, which is the general uh, CMS system for, for over 100 bigger uh, government institutions. It's now open sourced and open code. And on the learning session of open sourcing is, we had a lot of discussion with the ministry. What does it mean? Which kind of licenses do we need? We still have problems with this project to get it full open source, but we are on the way. And I think that's a big and really important thing because we open up getting in this direction. Then for sure data, we had it in the morning already um, during the COVID pandemic, uh, RKI, they really needed to fasten up to collaborating. So till now, to, I, I just checked this morning, Every day they, uh, they present their data and their analysis through open code and you can use them and reuse them uh, on the platform as on other platforms as well. And for sure the product development, I hand over to Alex. Cool. Um, this, is, this is, I guess, like the secret slide um, in, in regards to businesses, but, but not in, in the open source um, way. Um, many people are asking, how do we make uh, OpenDesk, for example, also work within the lib the, the legal framework, and, and that's where the, it's always like the special source of tenders um, uh, comes in. I guess um, we, have, um, we have some sort of in-house capability within all the public um, institutions, which makes life for us on, on that side very easy. What we did um, in the past few months was uh, create some sort of framework agreement with um, one central spot, so to say, the service provider, and then having all our product partners, some of them are here, um, a data center and also a consultancy within this framework. Um, I think it's really important and, and that's what um, I think we, when we were creating it, haven't thought about that because um, we were just looking for a solution for our business case, so to say. But, but that's something that, um, that is very, um, you can just replace the word open desk um, and, and make it um, into your own product, so to say. And, and I think it's, uh, it's a way that we can see at least um, products work and, and scale within the open source community and handing it over to, to actual use within the public administration. Um, we are launching, and that's really important, um, uh, we are launching next week and, and all our, um, uh, the teams and the teams within our product partners, um, I think we have 14 different teams working right now on OpenDesk. Um, are all heavily invested into launching um, a, an enterprise solution, which we call at least that way, um, next week uh, at the Smart Country Convention in Berlin. Um, so if you, if you don't have any travel plans, um, come to Berlin. It's always, a, it's always nice. Um, I think this is the way that we want to describe how open source products um, can run also with a business model run right behind it. Although keeping the, the open source spirit as well. Um, so we have right now already on open code, uh, you can download it and, and try to make it work, um, uh, a self-hosted community edition of, of OpenDesk. Um, and then what we are adding is everything else up until the, the, the submarine uh, project that we are running on um, right now. And we have a software as a service solution, uh, which is really easy for most of public administrations to, to get in touch with, so to say, because Everybody knows that the infrastructure within um, IT service providers, which are public, is sometimes um, critical. Um, we have, um, if you are more on a, on a security level side, um, you can run it in your own data center. We are, um, German public administration is not only located in Germany, but also um, in, in many other countries. Uh, and, and they need a solution where the, the, their data is, um, is, is highly protected and they have a known strategy in regards to what kind of infrastructure they want to use for data centers and what we are trying to get work uh, is some sort of a confidential cloud solution for that. And I think this is a variety of how every open source product could run and, and, and we see it already being copied in, 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 in smaller scale. Um, and it's also something that we will continue with other products which Sandis is going to provide. So maybe that's it. Again, um, 
it's, it's a lot about sovereignty through open source and um, having the freedom of choice in the way of deployment as well. So we always say it's there's an option to go through our, our infrastructure, but you are able to use your own. So that's a possibility that opens up quite a lot. And that's, that's for us, it's then is really important as, as this is our core mission. Um, when we talk about open so, uh, sovereign products for the public sector, we always have in mind we need to talk about the software the development lifecycle as well. Because when we have sovereign products and we still are totally connected to, to the general uh, infrastructure, which is currently uh, mainly used for, for software distribution and development, so GitHub, Microsoft, Amazon, AWS, whatever, um, we we still have a lot of um, um, parts where we are not that sovereign that as we want to be. So with, with the open code, we we addressing those more, giving the option to, to go a different way. Um, we always, um, as Alex just mentioned, um, and make sure there is a community version available, which you just can use and use your own way of deployment and production, but we also want to offer through software as a service uh, if you are not able to have these. So with this, we think we can open up an ecosystem, and we do open up an ecosystem of innovation and sovereign software products for, for public sector. And plus one, the guess us would give us a lot of uh, freedom and different approach for the next decade. Thanks a lot.